Hey YouTube, super excited to be here with you. I wanted to take you through some content all around how to change out data sources again. So call this version two of our initial video. In this one though, I wanna take you through how to change your data sources from a, you know, a file on your personal drive, so my documents, downloads, to a SQL server. Uh, I just thought that would be a good subset of content to kind of preview. Let's just pretend, and I didn't put a fancy report together for this content. I kept it really simple, but let's just pretend you had a beautiful, nice report already developed. This is a time tracking subset of data. So you had, set, you had everything set up, everything ready to go, and then, drum roll, you actually got a database set up. And so you want to move this data from your actual local machine to your Azure SQL Server. And so I'm going to just show you really quickly what I'm working with. So I've got a flat file that's connected to my documents. You'll see it's a navigation through um, and a couple of change type steps to get you to this final output. So I've already got the report built off of, um, let's pretend like it's built off the time file. Let's see which one it is actually built off of. Perfect. So this is the file that is my local. And the file up above it is we'll call it MySQL. It's not MySQL, it's just a SQL database, but you get it, right? So, <laughs> all right, so my local and MySQL. So we've got this, again, we're pretending we got a fancy report developed already on this infrastructure. And we're like, oh no, we've got to change over our data sources. How do I do that without breaking everything in the report? Well, these are all really great questions. And in this video, I'm just gonna take you through how to do it really quickly. Uh, this is gonna be one of those under, five minute videos if we're super lucky. So, all right, here's your data source. What I normally do whenever I'm trying to make changes from one data source to another that are identical in nature is use Power Query. It's just my general rule of thumb. So I went out and just connected to this data because it's always easier just to connect to the actual data source. So I pulled this in from our SQL Server environment. Um, so again, just a SQL Server uh, instance in our tenant uh, and we've just pulled it in and then we went and got grabbed the schema and the actual item that we're looking at in particular. This one has 27 rows. Uh, the data source that I had originally has 27 rows and the same column count. Okay, so what I would normally do is come in here and grab the code. It's literally as simple as grabbing your code inside of your MySQL and changing it over to your MyLocal as long as all the data sources are the exact same. So that's the one thing I'd want to preface. And then you just hit done. Data automatically changes over. You hit close and apply. The data will refresh. Your report won't break. And you've got your new data source connected to your SQL environment without any issues, errors, or bugs. Fairly straightforward. Maybe most folks know how to do that. But I thought, hey, if I'm going to show you how to convert from SharePoint, uh, from Excel to SharePoint, I should do the same thing for a SQL Server just in case. Hopefully this was helpful. Keep it really short, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a good one.